Rendelev, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. You fell down into a black hole, but at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? Sila, that's the one that went to get Terendalev to help me. I like her. I feel him all right. When say no to a little less feeling in him. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now. We're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendalev healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? I mean, I'll try. I've got a plus zero on Knowledge World, and I've got a t two in Athletics. Strength is not my game. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt the, um, the lever. Nice. You quickly find some suitable sticks, and you free the wounded woman from the rubble without even breaking a sweat. Look at you! It's good to meet someone who uses brains first, and brawn second. Ugh, damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm Anevia Tiravaid, of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that, I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. We spoke a little bit before, before it happened, but yeah, I agree. Nobody can really prepare for that. Well, I'm Sila. Paladin by the grace of Iomade, I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendeb and fight demons. And well, I've been fighting for a while now. Sila is known as an iconic and is regularly featured on the TTRPG as well as other lore. Excellent. I, I, I like her a lot. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendalev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald, with the goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. That's fair. The Wart Stones are a chain of powerful artifacts keeping the World Wounds expansion at bay. The first and greatest in the chain was erected in the city of Canabras by the hand of the Inheritor himself, a golden-winged angel sent by the goddess Iomade. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabrace will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? I'm a traveler. I just wound up here by chance. Call me superstitious if you want, or maybe cynical. But I just don't believe in chance or coincidences. <laughs> How many stories around the tavern table have started with those very words? Right enough. I have this habit, see? Anytime somebody starts yakking about blind chance, it always turns out that the thing was as far from a quirk of fate as you could want. Sorry, don't take it personal, like. I don't. <sighs> now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. Hell, a long way. To summarize, there are three of us, with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. 
If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. I did not sign up for this, but okay. I guess none of us did. Now, I can change the marching order anytime I want, and in fact, I think I'm gonna do that here. Because I have two melee fighters, so they may as well be side by side. A resistance cloak, always a good plan. Terendal of Scale. Restore life to a deceased party member. Who's there? Oh, it's the noble from earlier. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... Naively, it now seems. That the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. I guess not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord, not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Terendalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? It was a pretty quick fight. Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now? We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. She's a little cold. Little, little cold. Mind telling me a little bit more about yourself? Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. That wasn't... No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier, and I also possess some knowledge of magic. What happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard! Whatever killed him, likely hasn't gone far. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. That's a hell of a name. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? We need to keep moving. There must be a way to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. <laughs> Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. <sighs> Very practical. We'll go Dagger Torch for the time being. She's already covered in blood. We haven't even gotten into a fight, Camellia. Why are you already covered in blood? So let's see what we have here. We've got an elf or a half elf that makes it so that I can't tell what their or what her alignment is. She is a shaman, I believe, and she has the ability to. Cast healing magic. Okay, okay. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and jump back into the default 
marching order. Oh, there's an enemy up there. Okay, so. When I play this game, I'm usually in turn-based mode, which is this right here. I'm not going to read it. Um, unless it's a, a combat that I'm sure I can win, this game has both a sort of real-time mode and a, a, uh, a turn-based mode. But for now, let's go ahead and go through this turn by turn. It's more or less at this point that Tam realizes he may be like an adventurer, but he's not like a fighter. That's two attacks, no hits so far. Then again, Sela can't seem to connect either. Huh. Nor can Camellia. <laughs> this is going so well or, or so far. Yeah, one damage. Good, good job. Oh my god, at least somebody wow. is competent. Thank you, Anivia. Well done. Into the fray! I'll cut you wide open! Hey, there we go. I got the kill. Not bad. At the moment, we can't afford to leave anything behind, and weight isn't exactly going to be an issue. Follow my lead. Now, here's the second option when it comes to combat. They will act automatically, and they won't use any special abilities unless I direct them to do so. Their initiative is on a timer rather than on a turn-based system. Again, Anivia with the covering fire. Save the last one for me. Tam, man, the the spirit is willing, but the flesh cannot hit the broadside of a barn. Did you see him just take off after that other enemy and then do nothing to it? Tam has a lot to learn, I feel. As it should be. I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. When to walk? Lan, did you find it? Who is that? So we have a reptile person and a spider person. The do gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait. They might know what's going on up there. Yeah, we know. Demons are laying waste to Can or to Canabras. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please. Show us the way out. Who are you? Tieflings? Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. We are the underground crusaders, the children of the crusade's finest. Sadly, underground crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. Oof. <laughs> you just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. 
but we call ourselves Neethers. No matter what you call us, it's not gonna stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. So Tam was fascinated at this point. The reason he left the monastery is because he wanted to meet new, different kinds of people, and this is about as different as you can get. I've never heard of underground crusaders before. In Canabras, they're called mongrels. People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. Huh. That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarion. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. So, Mendev is a country, and Galarian, I believe, is the planet that we're on. <sighs> Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are, and they'll love us for it. Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short. Our glories are quickly forgotten, but this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else, and that our lives are not lived in vain. I like these two. I like these two a lot. Huh, the first Crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. What are you doing here? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. A holy sword and a rock. Very original. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the Underground Crusaders to take up arms. If we get the Holy Sword, we might be able to change the Chief's mind. It's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. A maze? Does it really lead to the surface? Yes. There are other ways up, but they are far from here, and after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the Underground Crusaders, that the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. That makes sense. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. 
Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. Hold on, hold on. You said a sword of holy flame? How would something like that end up down here? It came here with its owner, a long time ago. 50,000 gongs, to be precise. 70 years ago, in Uplander time. Thank you. 50,000 gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. Original. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Lan! Watch your tongue. We'll find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. Sword. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? I feel like her cheerfulness is just a little bit forced, but I wouldn't say it to her face. What? You want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So Ooh, be bitter. It. Very bitter. Not that she doesn't have reason. Statue of an unknown knight from the First Crusade. Some sort of improvised museum, some kind of temple. A strange flash pierces the gloom, and Tam feels drops of searing blood run down his chest. The wound healed by Terendaliv reopens and weeps scarlet, but there is no pain or weakness. A hazy scene appears, a cave chamber. This one, or another one entirely? Tam's heartbeat quickens, and a stream of thought suddenly bursts into his mind, thoughts that clearly belong to another. Treachery! They betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect. The people from who, for whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are up ahead in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe that I am about to die from their traitorous blows? Next to me, a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refused to join with the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. Whilst I still have the strength, I must. While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Tam intuits that he can control them somehow. Let's try to uh, heal the wounded girl. A spark of healing magic illuminates the eerie, murky scene before Tam. The wounded girl opens her eyes and whispers, Ariel, you, you said that everything was going to change soon. You said that you and the other warriors of heaven would be leaving us on a grand mission to stop the demons forever. Is that true? The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster like a rushing river. The images flash by one after another. 
a priestess in colorful robes observing the stars, a young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword, a majestic golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet, but his voice ringing clear, only if you're willing, and only if you're ready. There is no going back. Then don't waste your strength healing me, the girl whispered. Your mission is more important. You, take care. It is near. There in the vision, the darkness in this cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chirruping and rustling emanates from the shadow, the sound piercing like hot irons lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy, and the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. But Tam is determined to fight off the illusion. The force of the attack, though originating in a vision, is terrifying, but Tam is stronger. He shakes off the pain and torpor, but alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It is not real, it exists only in this strange vision or memory, but the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of Discari, the terrifying demon lord. In a movement as swift as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they called Lariel. The foolish angel, struggling on the rocks, like a fly with its wings torn off, intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from quiet whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old and quavering. Where is your goddess angel? Where is her self-assured herald? How is it that you are here dying alone, so far from the light of your heaven? A strange calm envelops the thoughts of the one called Lariel. He recognizes who stands before him, and he knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand, bright, pure, flickering with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash! The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh, and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing his grip on Lariel's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undiminished. He grips the sword and with his last burst of strength, plunges it into the rock. Tam senses that the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing, like a river running dry. The last thing he hears is, You will kill me, monster. This I know. But one day, someone will come here and raise up my sword. They will raise it up and save and protect the innocent. The vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. Tam does not hear the final words, but he seems to complete the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from his lips, and with them, Something else. The heat blazing in Tam's chest fades away. The edges of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, Tam sees the flaming sword in his hand, or rather, its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With the final surge of warm and soothing light, the sword vanishes, and the light is drawn into his hand. Tam senses that it will return. All he need do is call. Hey Tam, are you all right? You were kind of glowing just now. That... that was it. The light of heaven, but how? What did you do with it? Where did it go? You saw it too. The traitors. The dying girl. It's only us here. Your group. You, me, Wendu, and the light of heaven that sort of got, uh, sucked into you? Any chance you can whip it out again? Crazy. We do kind of need it. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous, and when I'm upset, and when I'm happy. A anyway, what I said, it came out wrong. Yeah, it did. We need to bring you to Chief Sum. You can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe, and go into the maze, and we'll get back our kin. And what if he can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. I think I saw the memories of Lariel, the angel who died here. Lariel? 
That really was Lariel? The angel from the legends. The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. The chief will be thrilled. You. Thousands of gongs, and no one's been able to touch it. And now you, an ordinary creature of flesh and blood no different to us, get the sword and start talking about visions. Now, now, Wentuag, don't be a sore loser. He is clearly different from us. The sword appeared before him, along with the angel's name and all that other stuff. Because he doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special Racing we again. are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. Now, Lan, I don't know that that's true. I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but... You and Sul, you just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the Abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us worthier. But it also doesn't make you worse or less worthy either. That wasn't your choice, and they needed to do that, apparently, to, to make the victory happen, I guess? I don't know anything about the First Crusade. That said, I th think I figured out how this sword works. That is just... Wow, I mean, that's amazing! Heaven has truly blessed you. I didn't ask for this. This power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? Yes, it's similar. But this light is more... golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then, the perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Canabras. Lead us to your chief, and I'll decide if I'm gonna help you or not. Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. Now what is that? Oh, damn. Oh, there's spiders. Ah, uh, yes, there's a combat log as well that I can look at, which is pretty cool. I don't think I need tutorials here either. Go get him. I'm done with you. Gross. Just bug guts all over everything. I found something. Yeah, you found spiders. Please go kill them. <laughs> Thank you. In fact, I should probably take a look at the inventory really fast. Lan, you could probably use these bracers of armor, since you can't wear armor. You are a Zen archer, so a type of monk that specializes in using a bow. Oh, hey, look. Some monks seek to become one with another weapon entirely. The bow. Um, Wendwag here is a fighter, specifically an archer. Camellia is a spirit hunter, a shaman who can both heal and summon. Sela is, of course, a paladin to the surprise of absolutely nobody. And, of course, I've got the instinctual warrior barbarian thing going for me. What else do we have that we might equip?
You've got a long sword, but I've got this cold iron long sword here, so we're gonna go ahead and swap that out. Perfect. That is not far. Uh, Wendwag glances at Lan, who is fixing his slipped bowstring and quickly walks over to you. Her cat-like eyes glow from beneath her hood. Listen here, you. I don't know who you are or where you come from, but you and I are the only two people here who see things clearly. That's why I'm asking you, don't show the light of heaven to Sul. Um, Lan is sure that the light should be shown to the mongrels. He wants to play the hero. His first idea, if you remember, was to grab the sword and run headlong into the maze. Does that sound like a plan to you? To me, it sounds like suicide. The worst part is that the tribe might actually take his words to heart and follow where he leads. I'll think about it. Let's go. Don't show the chief the light, and I'll lead you through the maze to the surface. I swear it. Onward to Neatholm. I'll go ahead. Your first impression of the mongrel village is of a squalid dump with odors to match. Unblinking, glowing eyes watch you from the gloom, and deformed shadows slope between the huts. You see some mongrels gutting white eyeless fish, while others are repairing fishing nets. All the signs of normal village life, but tense expectation hangs in the air. A heavy-set, aged mongrel slowly shuffles his way toward you. The hair on his head grows in limp, wispy strands, and his face has a distinctly rat-like appearance with pronounced teeth, and you hear a rattling sound in his chest with every breath he takes. One of his eyes is white, fully scarred by cataracts, while the other gleams with moisture. Uplanders, end times are upon us indeed. Chief Sul, we found the angel's sword. We found the one who can wield it. He had a vision, and now the angel's sword to get, er, together with the light of heaven are somehow inside him. Gather the tribe, anyone who can hold a weapon. The young ones are still alive. We can go save them. Ah, Lan, always dreaming, always talking. You're too hasty, too hasty for your own good. It's going to get you in trouble. An uplander with the light of heaven, that's too good for us. Our kind doesn't have good things happen. There's always a catch. Lan trusts people because he likes to believe. Isn't that right, Lan? I'm the chief. I don't work on faith. Show the light. Lan speaks the truth. So it's true. The angel did not forsake us, no. He came back from the dead he came to save our children. Ooh, Wenduag is not happy. She says that the husks of men and women, their blood will be on my hands. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm not responsible for others' decisions. And why are they making these decisions? Because of you. You've sealed their fate. You're a murderer. You always think the worst, Wendu. We're not on our own in this anymore. We've got allies. Well, a couple at least, but one good fighter is worth ten bad ones. You have the right of it, Lan. But we're Neithers, and we're going to wait. I sent a message to summon all the tribes. It will take time, yes, but they will all come. They will all come for the light. Wait, Lan. Wait, Uplanders. Rest a while in one of our huts. Our home is your home. All right, Chief. Understood. Let's hope that a few hours isn't the difference between life and death for those kids. If they ask me what took us so long, I'll tell them it was your decision. It's level up time, friends. Level up time. 
Now, again, I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds. I will just do a quick overview of the new things that I can do. Um, we are taking the second level of Instinctual Warrior, which is going to give us Uncanny Dodge, which allows us to uh, dodge area attacks better, and Cunning Illusion, which adds our Wisdom bonus to my armor class, um, which is going to go up by plus one for four barbarian or for every four barbarian levels. In other words, it makes me harder to hit. I'll go ahead and pick up mobility again. Um, we'll continue to take trickery, and I'm going to go lore religion as well. I think having both lores, nature and religion, is going to end up being important. And that's the level up. No problem. Next, Sila is going to pick up Divine Grace, which gives her a Charisma bonus to all saving throws. And she is going to get Lay on Hands, which allows her to heal others and herself for a little bit of health um, every so often. Looks like she is taking Mobility, Knowledge World, and Persuasion. And that's that. Level 2. Up next, we have Camellia. She's going to take her second level in Spirit Hunter. She gets Hex. Which, let's see. A Hex is a standard action that doesn't provoke blah, blah, blah. Got it. She gains mobility. and She's going to be my main lockpick for a while. Look at that trickery score. This Hex gains or grants the Shaman a plus two natural armor bonus to AC. That's nice. Big fan of that. Lan takes another level in Zen Archer, which means he's going to get a bonus feat and Way of the Bow. So he gets weapon focus with the Longbow, I believe. Athletics, Mobility, Perception. Yeah, we've got a really good spread of skills here. I'm pretty happy with how this is working out. He also picks up Precise Shot, which means he can fire against people even when his friends are right next to them, and it won't distract him or anything like that. And that's Lan, level two. Wendwag is picking up Bravery, bonus on saves against fear, as well as a bonus combat feat. She picks up... Uh, lore and perception, uh, nature and perception. So a little bit of overlap there. Deadly aim trades out accuracy for damage with a bow. And uh, that's Wendog. And I believe that's everybody. Level two, yes, here we go. 